today we're going to talk about Uncharted. Not necessarily the games, though the games are absolutely fantastic. I have all three of them here. There's the first one, the second one, and the third one. Oh, I say all three. Well, all three that were released for the PlayStation 3. Uncharted was the PlayStation 3 mascot for the Sony poster boy child. Just like how uh, Ratchet and Clank was the poster boy child for the PS2 era. You know, not necessarily the only one. You know, there's Sly Cooper, there's the platformers, but like this game here was like one of the flagship big, big launch titles for the PlayStation 3. And it was fantastic for the time, for the year it came out. And even to now, at least in my opinion, I feel like this game has aged really well. Not necessarily compared to the sequels. The sequels are fantastic. Five out of five. So many Game of the Year awards. But this one, for the first one to launch a franchise, did exactly everything correctly. For fans of Indiana Jones, for fans of the Tomb Raider games, basically you got what is essentially a Tomb Raider style of game mixed with the Indiana Jones storytelling level of adventure. And that is a match made in heaven for me because this was one of my absolute favorite games when I played it. I felt like these were basically just movies. All three of these are basically just movies. And you could just look up the movie on, on YouTube if you want. Just type in Uncharted 3 movie and you would find all of the cutscenes and it's ba you could watch all of them and you wouldn't be lost by having not played the games because it's such a fantastic story. All three of them. Even the first one. The mocap or whatever the uh, mocap is still pretty uh, experimental for 2007 in regards to how in depth they were trying to go for it and that's why people say that this one feels the most aged the combat feels very repetitive there's a lot of lengthy shootout scenes and it's not as um as um good as the sequels were, but for the first one, for the first installment, this installment launched the franchise here. They made a fourth one, the final one for Drake's final outing, but the Nathan Drake character will live on forever in our hearts. And it would come finally to the silver screen with Uncharted, the DVD movie here I've got. The Uncharted movie, I believe, was starting to be filmed in 2019, and then it got delayed for a certain thing that happened in the 2020s. Perhaps you've heard of it. But they eventually pr released it, they eventually got it out, and it got a lukewarm reception. Um, I watched a lot of the video game movie adaptations, and all, most of them don't necessarily do justice. They don't really get as good. Um, one of them that I thought was actually pretty good, though, was the Tomb Raider movie. There were three of them. Um, the first two are very campy, but they're very entertaining and enjoyable. The ones with um, Angelina Jolie, those two were very fun movies. I've got those two somewhere. Um, and then they made a recent one in the 2010s with, uh, I believe her name is Alicia Vikander. Um, she is fantastic as Laura. that she does her own take on it. She's not as good, I'd argue, as Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie actually really looked like the part. She looked the part, though she didn't exactly have the uh, accent down perfectly or whatnot, but she looked the part, you know, and it was really well done. And for the 2010s uh, movie, for what it was worth, it was decent enough. It was passable. And that's what I feel Uncharted was. It is a passable movie. There's a lot of twists, a lot of turns, just like in the games. But I would say that the with the film's weakest point is the villain. 
Now, for the first quarter, first third of the film, you are led to believe that this man here, Antonio Banderas, is the main villain. You are led to believe that he is the main villain. He's going to be the leader of the big, big corporation guy who's chasing you after the MacGuffin, kind of like how the other three films are set up, other three games are set up. But, actually, it's, um, Antonio Banderas' is, um, hired goon lady here. She's the one who's actually the main character, the main villain, and I kind of don't really care for that character. I don't really care for that twist. She doesn't necessarily feel like she's been, she's justified to be the final villain, the main villain. Um, if you had set her up from the start to be the main villain, I think you might be able to do something with that, but... Antonio Banderas just has way too much charisma that even if he's just a red herring villain, he steals the movie. He stole the movie for me, and I just really wanted him to be the main villain for the whole film. And that's just a, uh, it's just my personal opinion. But it doesn't take too much away from the film. It doesn't really take too much away from it. Um, we have here Tom Holland playing as Nathan Drake. This is kind of like... Um, when you played the third one here, the third one here, you played as a young Nathan Drake during a flashback sequence where he first meets Sully. Now, that young Nathan Drake, and then the uh, Nathan Drake you would meet in uh, Drake's Fortune, somewhere in between that age, that, that age gap, is where you're going to find Tom Holland's Nathan Drake. This Nathan Drake is a younger early 20s teenager type of archetype character and this is the film's very adaptation of how he meets Sully and all that stuff. This Sully, sh um, played by Mark Wahlberg, Mark and Mark, I kind of feel like if you gave him another five to ten years he would probably fit the part a lot better but he kind of looks a little bit too young to necessarily be um, Nathan's mentor in this. You probably would have needed somebody different. There is a fan video, a fan-made video on YouTube starring Nathan Fillion as the Nathan Joy character, and I forget the uh, guy who plays Sully, but he's the guy who plays the uh, blind soldier man in um, Don't Breathe. It's that man. I forget his name, but he plays Sully in the fan video. And those two roles, those two characters, fit that role almost to a T perfectly. They fit it great. And while Nathan Fillion does feel like he's a bit older now, though you still could have cast a char uh, an actor like Nathan Fillion in, say, an Uncharted film set during the Uncharted 4 timeline, because Nathan's a bit older there, that kind of feels like you could have done something like that. But I feel like Nathan Fillion is the perfect role for Nathan Drake. Tom Holland doesn't necessarily feel like Nathan Drake to me, though he feels like he can become Nathan Drake to me. This guy is doing a lot of his own stunts in this film, and you can see that, and it looks really, do really good. There are some stunts and scenes that are taken from, um, I believe it's either one of these two here. There's some stunts and scenes from the plane, and that, yeah, right here, that you can see here in Uncharted 3. The cover here, he's hanging off the back of the plane. That scene is in here. There's some really over the top campy crap that's going on here, and it feels like it fits into the Uncharted world because there's some really crazy stuff that happens in these games that, that they, you know, but if there's one thing that I feel like Tom could improve on, it's making quips as he's climbing and doing all this stuff. He, feel, he needs to make those types of sarcastic quips that, um, um, what's his name? What's his name? I know this is Nathan Drake, but who, he's played by Nolan North. Nolan North. Nolan North makes a lot of quips and um, all sorts of um, nervous laughs whenever he finishes a big jump and things of that nature. He, he, Nolan really brings the heart of the Nathan character to life in in these games, and I feel like that's something that's missing from Tom Holland's character. Though I feel like he can pull it off. He, if they give this an Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3, I feel like he can, he can 
settle into the role. This isn't necessarily the strongest start I would have wanted to see from a film adaptation, but it's passable, just like the 2010's Tomb Raider movie was. It's passable. But the problem is with films, they, they can't just be passable. They have to be explosions. They have to be an explosion, because an explosion will warrant the sequels. This film here got the Game of the Year award for 2007. This thing merited a sequel almost like a year or two later. And then this thing won, like, everything. Five out of five stars. It won everything. It won another Game of the Year award, right? So it warranted a third sequel. And this one won uh, not as many awards as the second one, but it won a bunch of stuff here, man. And then that warranted the fourth one on the PS4, you know? And the PS4 one, the Uncharted 4, did a really, well, a really good job. And so that warranted the film that people have been wanting to make for a while. Now... I believe that they've been trying to make Uncharted the movie for a while. It's been in development hell for like 10 years, you know? So I understand that this may not have been the best film that it wanted to be, but it could have been a whole lot worse where a bunch of these other video game adaptations are concerned. It could have been a whole lot worse. For what we got, we got something that was really good. By comparison to the other video game adaptation movies. By comparison to those. Not necessarily by comparison to the games. No, no, no. It, it pales in comparison to the games. Watching this movie just makes you feel like playing the games. Which I think is not a bad thing. Honestly. Because I would love to replay these games again, man. They're very short. You could probably knock an Uncharted Games campaign. Just the story. You could probably knock an Uncharted Games campaign out in like a day or two. They're short, but they're very entertaining. They're very, very fun stories. And they also remind you of Indiana Jones. And then you say, okay, I want to watch Indiana Jones again. So you put the movies in it. it it's, a vis it's, a, it's a wonderful cycle of entertainment. It, it's only rising. So you watch this, you get inspired to play these, and you get inspired to watch Indiana Jones. And there's no problems with that. You can't go wrong with that. Um, I think this is passable. Um, could it be better? Yes. Could it be a whole lot better? Yes. Could it have been absolutely amazing? Could this have been the modern-day Indiana Jones movie? Yes. It has the potential. It had the potential. The casting was not as strong, but I think Antonio Banderas was perfect casting. I believe he should have been the main villain. I said that already. Chloe could have been a little bit better. I think she should have had a different actress playing her, though this is a younger Chloe instead of the Chloe that we see in Uncharted 2 and 3. So I can, I'm can i willing to forgive that. She needs to grow into the role of the Chloe that we see. Though I don't think this actress has that charisma, that type of charm to play off the exact character from the games. Which I think is okay. She could probably make the role her own. But if she tries to do that, she needs to make it likable. Because we're going to compare her to the Chloe from Uncharted 2 and 3. And if she pales in comparison to that Chloe, then that we are going to see that. We're going to see that and... We're going to say that you, you're paralleling in comparison to that, you know? At least with Tom Holland, I say he has a lot of potential. He has incredible potential, man. In No Way Home was one of the biggest films. It is the biggest film post-quarantine era. It is the biggest film since Endgame. That's, that's a better way to say it. It is the biggest film since Endgame. And Tom Holland is the star to look for, so... I think he has a lot of charisma, I think he has a lot of potential to be the Nathan Drake in these movies, but since he's such a big, big star now, if they were going to make a sequel, it probably would be a big paycheck to Tom here, unless he's be willing to be humble and take a smaller paycheck, since this is a smaller movie compared to No Way Home. If he's, w if he's willing to come back, I would like to see him again. I would like to see Mark Wahlberg again. I think these two can fit those roles. They just need to tweak it just a little bit more. He needs to be a little bit more charismatic the way that Nathan is in the games. He needs to just look the part, give it a couple of years, and he'll eventually look the part. 
he, he does everything else all right. He does the his Marky Mark thing, though, so he needs to stop trying to do Marky Mark and try a little bit harder to do Sully here. I think it's a, it's, I think he can do it. I definitely think he can do it. I think these two are a great pair. They do banter off each other decently. They have potential. Chloe doesn't have as much potential in my opinion, but I think she can pull it off. And I really, really want to see, um, I've already forgotten her name. Wow. But, um, the lady who plays Nathan's eventual wife, the blonde, um, I want to see her. I want to see her eventually. I want to see her show up in these movies. Um, I want to see, maybe they could do an adaptation of this film, this game here. Maybe they could just do an adaptation. Actually, no, never mind. Just scratch that. I don't think they should ever do a full-on adaptation of one of the games. They shouldn't adapt one of the stories because I fear, I really fear, that they're probably not going to be as good as the game. And people are going to compare that. People are going to scream that out loud. So they need to have storylines that are set separate enough to not be as comparable to the game. So maybe they should have a maybe they can have a little moment or two, like like I said in Uncharted Three here, the uh, plane scene in Uncharted Three that's in this film. It's a nod. I think you can have nods and get away with it in your in the Uncharted adaptation movies. So honestly, I think this movie is passable. I think. It has potential for sequels, I just hope that it gets it, because I would honestly love to see more of this. I would like to see more, I'd like to see these guys try a little bit harder, I'd like to see them come back. And, uh, that's it, I guess. I don't do closings, be imaginative.